300 grams of protein every single day. That is what one guy tells me. It's because if I don't eat that much, then I won't end up looking like a Greek god. I will end up looking more like a skeleton. And then another friend tells you that, wait, you don't need to consume so much of protein because at the end, protein gets recycled in the body. And then you have another gym bro that tells you that, wait, if you consume a lot of protein, it will turn into fat. So which one from all of this is true? Well, I'm going to burst that bubble because everything we think we know about protein is actually a lie. Or is it just that your fitness industry wants you to spend a lot of money on your supplements? So let's get started. Now let's start with something that the supplement industry won't really tell you. When you consume any protein food or supplement, your body doesn't slap that protein directly into the muscles. It's not like a Lego brick that you just take it and just attach it to something. What it will do is that it will break those proteins down into amino acids. So every single gram of your protein gets converted to amino acids first. And then your body decides that where is it going to send these amino acids? Your skin, your hair, your hormones, your muscles, where is it going to go? It's pretty much like an Uber for amino acids because they don't go where you want them to go. They will go where your body decides that it needs to go. And here's something really cool and the fitness industry never tells you. That your body recycles protein like it's an eco-friendly factory. And if you're wondering how much protein does your body recycle? Well, get ready because that is 250 to 300 grams of protein per day. So even if you end up eating just 50 to 100 grams of protein a day, your body ends up recycling very close to 250 to 300 grams of protein every day. And that's all thanks to the internal recycling system. It's not wasteful, it's just that your body is really smart. And many a times it uses the same old raw material over and over again. Now I want you to imagine your body like a sports team. Let's say a football team. Each player on the field is like a protein doing a very important job defending, attacking, and even managing the midfield. Now, every day, the coach, which is your body, watches these players. Some of them are tired, some of them are injured, and some of them just aren't really performing anymore. So what does the coach do? Instead of hiring an entirely new team every day, which would be like eating tons of protein, the coach rotates the squad. He benches some players, or sometimes he just trains and he reassigns others, or occasionally he might just bring some new talent from the outside. This way, the team stays fresh, fast, and very effective. So this is pretty much how the body works. It constantly recycles instead of replacing proteins. So even if you've had no protein today or zero amount of protein today, your body will still reuse 300 grams of protein. That's like not filling your car with fuel and still having half a tank. So now tell me that would you need 300 grams of protein on top of that? So now you know that your body breaks down protein and it also recycles the protein that was previously consumed like a pro. But here's the juicy part. Does it mean that more protein is equal to more muscle? Well, let's crush this lie too. The more protein means more muscle is wrong. The body has a limit of how much protein it can use for muscle growth just like every other car which has a limit of how much fuel it can take in its tank. And even proteins have their limit and once that limit is reached do you know what happens? The body either burns it for energy or it converts it into fat through a process called de novo lipogenesis. So wait 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 wait. The same industry that is telling me to have this high protein diet is not telling me that if I consume excess protein, it's going to convert into fat instead of muscle. Mm, that sounds suspicious. But what about timing? What if I miss those three hours window where I don't end up consuming my protein? Now you've heard that if you don't have protein every three hours, your body might just end up losing that muscle. But if you consume that protein within three hours, your body will be able to keep that muscle as it is. On the other hand, you've also heard that after your workout you really need to have your protein shake because if you don't have your protein shake whatever you worked out for you might end up losing your entire muscle or those gains that you worked for will suddenly just disappear that is absolute garbage now your body has an incredible system that's called a protein turnover it's constantly breaking down old proteins and rebuilding them kind of like recycling old bricks of a building and here's where the magic really happens so when you fast your body suddenly doesn't go like oops there's no food, so I'm going to eat the muscle. In fact, it does quite the opposite. It boosts your growth hormones to protect your muscles and fats instead. So no, if you skip a meal or if you fast maybe for a good amount of hours, well, you're not going to lose that muscle. But if you're drowning yourself in those protein shakes, well, that might just get you a new layer of fat. So if you think you need protein every three hours, then well, 
thrash the idea because your body is much smarter than that. And now let's get brutally honest to the point as to how much protein do you actually need to see results. And this is not what your gym bro says, but what science really says. So here's how much protein you really need to have. So if you are a sedentary person, then you will require around 0.8 grams of protein per kilo of your body weight. So let's say that you weigh around 70 kilos, when that is around 56 grams of protein per day. If you're an active person, then you require 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilo of your body weight. Which means if you weigh around 70 kilos, that means on the lower end, you'll require around 84 grams of protein per day. And on the higher end, you'll require around 116 grams of protein per day but this is also for someone who is quite active or has a job that requires a lot of physical movement during the day or if you're someone who regularly works out well this is the range that you should be in but if you are an athlete or you are a lifter then you require around 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilo of your body weight which is quite around 154 grams of protein per day. And if you have anything more than that, then it is all wasted. And that's not me, that's what science says. And really, instead of drowning yourself in those protein supplements, just try and have quality protein from whole foods. The reason they are called supplements is because you're not getting them from food, so you're supplementing them from your food. But if you have foods that are really whole foods, then you don't even need those supplements. So focus on whole foods like your dal, your tofu, food, your nuts and seeds. Other than just your protein, they also have a lot of fiber, a lot of vitamins and they don't have any of those shady preservatives or additives. Alright, so now you already know how much protein you really need to consume. But let's come to the real question that why are we so confused when it comes to protein? And who profits if you always think that you are protein deficient? The food companies? No. Nope supplement industry but their worth is close to 20 billion globally because if you think you need protein you'll end up buying protein now that is not a nutritional plan that is a business model and you have to understand that they bank on your fear the fear that you are protein deficient if you don't consume protein or if you don't consume that one shake after your workout you will not really make your muscle grow if you don't have a protein supplement you will never be able to grow the kind of muscle that you want or maybe your muscles won't really get repaired the fear that the product that they are selling you is the only way your muscles will grow. The fear of muscle loss or the fear of you not being hardcore enough. So basically there is no real evidence to show that if you consume anything more than 2.2 grams of protein per kilo of your body weight will help you grow your muscle even better. So now you know literally how the game works. Understand one thing that your body recycles protein and also fear sells protein. So I hope this video has helped you to understand more about protein instead of you wasting money on supplements. And if you want to watch another video similar to this then do check out this one. And if you also want me to break down some best protein sources that are great for your muscle growth then do drop this in the comments and until we meet again next don't stress and be awesome for sure that